UFC 310 Pantoja vs. Asakura took place on December 7th at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. The event brought in $5 million at the gate, and even more in pay-per-view revenue, sponsorships, and merchandise sales, not to mention the UFC's broadcasting deal with ESPN, which pulls $300 million a year. But how big of a slice did the fighters take home? The Nevada State Athletic Commission does not disclose fighter pay information, so while Venom sponsorship and fight bonuses are released, the purses I'll be showing in this video are just projections based on disclosed earnings from previous events. With that said, let's jump into the first fight. Every fighter that's under contract, if you want to tell the media what you're paid, that's up to you. The feature prelim saw Anthony Smith come out aggressively against fellow light heavyweight Dominic Reyes in a competitive first round, however Reyes picked up momentum as the round progressed. In the second, what started as a takedown attempt resulted in Reyes assaulting Smith with strikes and elbows while he shelled up for the majority of the round. With 14 seconds left, the referee finally decided it was too much and called the fight, resulting in the TKO victory for Dominic Reyes. Smith, who missed weight on his initial attempt, did make the light heavyweight limit before the weigh-in window expired, meaning that he earned his full $250,000 fight purse, along with $21,000 in Venom sponsorship, also known as Fight Week Incentive, for a total of $271,000. While Reyes brought in $130,000 to show and $130,000 for the win, $11,000 in sponsorship for $271,000 on the night. Duho Choi kicked off the main card, landing bombs on his opponent, Nate Landwehr, and largely dominated on the feet and on the ground. Landwehr settled in and looked a bit better to open the second, but takedowns by Choi put him in dominant positions for nearly half the round. In the final frame, another takedown by Choi allowed him to secure a crucifix on Landwehr, effectively trapping him while Choi landed elbows and strikes. When it became clear that Nate couldn't escape, the referee stepped in, handing Duho Choi the TKO win. Nate the Train brought in $58,000 to show, with $6,000 in sponsorship, and took home $64,000. While Duho Choi made $48,000 to show and another $48,000 for the win, along with $6,000 in sponsorship pay, for a total of $102,000. In the second fight, Crone Gracie almost immediately pulled guard against fellow featherweight Bryce Mitchell, taking the fight to the ground where Gracie spent the entirety of the round on his back, unable to mount any real submission threat, while Mitchell peppered him with strikes from the top. This trend continued in the second, with an armbar midway through the round being the closest Gracie came to actually getting a finish. His strategy backfired in the final round, as after Crone pulled guard, Bryce slammed him down to the canvas, nearly knocking him out, and finished the job with a couple of nasty elbows to give Thug Nasty the KO victory. Gracie earned $45,000 to show, as well as $4,500 in sponsorship pay, for $49,500 on the night. While Mitchell pulled in $62,000 to show, and another $62,000 for the win, $6,000 in Venom sponsorship, and a total of $130,000. The third fight saw heavyweight contenders Cyril Gaon and Alexander Volkov trade takedowns that had them both spending time in top position, with Gaon nearly sinking in a guillotine as the opening round ended. In contrast, the second took place primarily on the feet. Volkov looked sharp and attempted a guillotine of his own near the end of the round, but two of the judges controversially scored the round for Gaon. This would come into play as Volkov appeared to take the third, but when the scorecards were read, it came down as a split decision victory for Cyril Gaon. The crowd booed the result, and Dana White apologized to to Volkov outside of the cage. Volkov's last disclosed purse was four years ago when he headlined a fight night against Curtis Blades and made $80,000. While on its own, that doesn't tell us much about his purse today, if we estimate standard bumps in pay for the fights he's had since then, along with a couple of new contracts, it puts him in the ballpark of $145,000 to show. That along with $16,000 in sponsorship pay gives him a total of $161,000. Although based on Dana White's comments after the fight, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he was paid his win money as well, which would have brought his total to $300,000. $106,000. For the winner Cyril Gaon, it's a completely different story. His most recent disclosed purse was listed at $500,000 back in 2022 at UFC 270 where he took on Francis Ngannou for the heavyweight belt. However, for top echelon fighters, disclosed purses don't tell the whole story. Gaon claims in the very next fight, where he headlined UFC Paris in September of the same year, he earned between $2 and $3 million. A far cry from 500k, and it being a fight night means that doesn't even include pay-per-view points. Now, it might include sponsorships and other income outside the UFC payroll, but even if we assume a $2 million base and subtract the 25% main event bonus, that still puts him at $1.6 million guaranteed for this fight. Although I have no way of verifying the claim, and it being 10 times what his opponent's making is a bit suspect, so take it with a grain of salt. Tack on $11,000 in Venom sponsorship, and you end up with $1,611,000.
In the co-main event, welterweight contender Shavkat Rachmanov held Ian Gary against the cage for the majority of the opening round. There was a bit more action in the second and third, but both fighters were defensive and seemingly hesitant to engage. In the fourth, Rachmanov scored a takedown and was able to deliver damage from top position, but the momentum shifted in the final round as Gary was able to take his opponent's back and nearly sink in a rear naked choke. Needing a finish, it was Ian's last best opportunity to steal a win, but Shavkat reversed position and managed to survive to the final bell. The scorecards confirmed a unanimous decision victory for Shavkat Rachmanov. Gary took home $90,000 for his efforts, and with this being a five-round fight, he was eligible for a bump in pay, which for Ian would have been around $22,500, along with $6,000 in Venom sponsorship, for a total of $118,500. Rachmanov was originally scheduled to headline this event against the current welterweight champion Bilal Muhammad. First time title challengers typically earned around $350,000 guaranteed, so I wouldn't be surprised if the UFC paid Shavkat that agreed upon amount for taking this non-title fight. However, if he was paid at his contracted rate, that would have been around $75,000, along with $75,000 for the win, $37,500 for the five round fight, and $6,000 in sponsorship, bringing his total to $193,500 on the night. Only 7% of the people watching this video are subscribers, so if you're enjoying the content and want to keep up with all the latest videos, take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. The first 30 seconds of the main event was absolutely insane as the challenger Kai Asakura landed a cracking flying knee on the champion Alexandre Pantoja, but was stunned by a hard left hand just moments later. The pace slowed just a hair as the round progressed, and it was an exciting and competitive opening frame. In the second, Pantoja was able to quickly take Asakura's back, and once on the ground, showed off his elite level jujitsu by locking in a rear naked choke for the win and defending his UFC flyweight title. Asakura, as a promotional newcomer and first-time title challenger, would have made less than the standard title fight purse. Flyweights are contracted at a lower rate in general, and he likely made around $150,000 to show, and I would assume no five-round bonus since he's already making championship pay. He also earned $32,000 in Venom sponsorship, totaling $182,000 on the night. And still, the UFC flyweight champion Alexandre Pantoja took home $350,000 guaranteed, along with $42,000 in sponsorship, as well as a $50,000 performance of the night bonus. And we know from former longtime champion Demetrius Johnson that flyweights usually do not receive pay-per-view points. However, in recent years, some flyweight champs have claimed they've been able to negotiate them as part of their contracts. Even if Pantoja did for his title defense, it's possible the buy rate may not have exceeded the threshold to earn points. However, for the sake of this estimate, if we assume that Pantoja did and the card sold around 350,000 buys, that would net him another 150k, giving the champ a grand total of $592,000. Hopefully I'm dead wrong and Pantoja made much more. After the fight, he called out the recently retired Demetrius Johnson. Johnson quickly turned down the challenge, despite being offered a likely career high $2 million to take the fight. That's all for this episode. Any corrections to the numbers I've shown will be listed in a pinned comment below. As always, thanks for watching. See you next week for UFC Fight Night, Covington vs. Buckley.